Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're in the Houston area at the Battleship USS Texas. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the ongoing restoration projects here at the Battleship Texas. But keep in mind, uh, while I stay very in tune with what they're doing, I'm not associated with this museum. Uh, so be sure to click the link in the channel below to Battleship Texas's various social media pages so you can hear what they're doing in their own words. They can probably explain it a lot better than I can. Battleship Texas is not only the last dreadnought and the oldest of the battleships that has been preserved in this country, she was the first one turned into a true museum ship all the way back in 1948. That means that there was nobody with any experience on how to operate and preserve a museum ship. And they did a lot of things back then that made sense at the time, but now with hindsight, we know that there's way better ways of doing it. So uh, they have a number of difficulties that are the result of unforeseen consequences of things that they did decades and decades ago because there was nobody else to tell them how to do it. Myself and the other museum professionals today look, uh, museum ship professionals in particular, look very closely at the work going on on Texas because she's the only battleship that's crossed the 100 year mark. My ship is gonna look just like that in a couple of years. What did they do? What worked? What did those who came before us do that we have since found caused issues? And how do we avoid doing that on our own ship? So uh, the biggest problem with USS Texas is a museum ship is supposed to get dry docked once every 20 years, maximum. However, dry docking a museum ship is a very expensive process. Uh, when Missouri was dry docked back around 2009, that was somewhere around $18 million. Uh, other battleships have gone in somewhere between 10 and 20 million at different time periods in the, the 90s and early 2000s. So uh, it's not cheap. And nonprofits like the Home Port Alliance for Battleship New Jersey that operates the ship uh, don't have significant money to dry dock their ships. So it's real easy to just say, eh, you know, we don't have any leaks, 20 years. We, we can extend that out to 30 years, 40 years? Well, at a certain point, you get a catastrophic failure and the price of your dry docking balloons up. 20 years ago, the cost to dry dock Texas might have only been $10 million. But now it's over $35 million because so much of the paint has been removed from the underside of the hull that uh, that steel has corroded very badly and has led to leaks. Something that amazed me was at the Historic Naval Ships Association conference, my buddy Travis, who does a lot of the Battleship Texas's YouTube channel videos, check out their link in the description below. Again, he, he explains all this way better than I do. It's just I have a bigger audience to, to pass this on to so far. Hop over to his page and, and get the, the real truth. Uh, he said that the battleship was leaking about 2,000 gallons per minute. And she wasn't sinking. The pumps were keeping up with that. But uh, that is an absolutely astronomical figure. That's a swimming pool going into the ship and being pumped out every minute. So it's forced them to come up with new ways to preserve the ship. What I'm watching most excitedly is the foam system they're using. The majority of the leaking is in these blister tanks you see along the side of the ship. They were grafted on after the ship's initial design and they leaked on day one. So here we are 80 or 100 years after they were installed. Uh, they're, they're not the same high grade steel as the rest of the ship, they're not armor. Uh, they've been leaking all along, so there's water inside and out. Uh, and they've rusted away and they've taken on a ton of water. Well, how do you solve that without being able to replace the plate? Because you've got to fix this problem before you can tow the ship 
into the Gulf to take her to a dry dock. She's docked right here at the Houston Ship Channel where dozens of oil tankers carrying critical infrastructure to the United States uh, sail up and down every single day. So you can't risk taking the ship in the ship channel, having her sink there and block the whole thing. And to boot, losing this relic. The solution that they found, which is something that I'm very much keeping an eye on, is spraying a foam in their tanks. If they fill the tanks with foam, there's no room for water to come through holes and flood those spaces. And then in theory, they can use um, a pressure washer to spray that foam off when the ship is in dry dock and they're putting new steel all over the wind water line where it's corroded away. The foam is a relatively recent uh, project that, that the guys here at Texas have completed. Before they could do that, all this water getting inside the ship caused issues with the ship's framing. So just water sitting there constantly uh, rots out the framing that holds the structure of the ship. And some of that structure uh, is supporting very heavy things like the steering gear or the engines. Each one of Battleship Texas's two engines weighs 2.5 million pounds. Uh, and so if the, the framing under them deteriorates badly enough, Marine surveyors foresaw a time when those critical parts just break out in the bottom of the ship and then she titanics in half and goes down. Now that's a worst case scenario, but the guys operating Battleship Texas were proactive about it and they were able to put in a cable system to lift up the boilers and engines off of those frames and support a percentage of that weight, maybe only about 20%, but that's enough. That's half a million pounds still. Uh, then they were able to go under where the frames were in the worst condition, particularly back aft. You see how the ship angles up, a lot of the water runs to the back of the ship. So that's the area that was in the very worst condition. Uh, so they were able to just weld doubled frames onto the ones that were badly corroded and then paint all of that so that it now has a protective barrier from that brackish water that the ship is sitting in. Uh, so with her bones intact, even if her skin isn't so great, those holes are still plugged by the foam, now the ship is in a condition to be towed. Another major recent project was the removal of macro artifacts. It's like all of the, uh, all of the main deck guns, the 40 millimeters, the three inches, the 20 millimeters could be craned off. This is saving weight from the ship and God forbid something happens and uh, one of Pacific Fleet's destroyers rams her like they're wont to do uh, and she sinks while being towed to the Gulf. Some of those critical artifacts from the ship have been saved. Uh, while they're waiting to raise the money to get the ship into dry dock and waiting for the dry dock to have an availability. They are able to work on those guns in an offsite warehouse so that when the ship comes back, they're absolutely pristine when they're dropped back on board. Other artifacts like the actual museum displays that were on board also had to be removed. Other things that uh, were not critical enough to be removed all of the, the chairs that are in the, the staterooms, but that you don't want careening across the deck on this ship were uh, wired in place so that they're not gonna be a hazard if anybody has to go on the vessel uh, while she's being towed, that, that stuff isn't gonna be flying all over the place, blocking doorways and, and uh, causing issues. Uh, further, a survey of interior equipment and the condition of the ship has been undergone so that they know exactly what they have and what's damage that exists now and what's damage that maybe somebody in the shipyard inadvertently causes so that they know that, uh, hey, you need to pay for that or we need to pay for that or this is something we need to fix or, you know, this isn't that bad yet, we can defer this. So if you'd like to know more about their dry docking and where they're going, there's a link in the description below to another video we made on that. And again, 
Check out the link in the description to Battleship Texas' social media. You guys ask me all the time, what's going on with Texas? What's going on with Texas? What's going on with Texas? Texas has her own staff of people who know even more about this ship than I pretend to. Uh, so go and hear it from the horse's mouth, what they're doing, what needs to be done, what they need, and be sure to support them in that too. There's also a link below to their donate page. Texas is probably in the greatest danger of any of the museum battleships. She is unique and she needs to be saved. So there's a link down below to their donate page so you can support the museum and help them get above that $35 million mark that they need to dry dock the ship. And then they'll need even more money to get her reopened to the public after saving the vessel. As I understand it, the ship is planning on going into dry dock. The, the dry dock that she's going into hasn't even been delivered to the shipyard yet. So that's what's holding us up at this point. Uh, they're planning on going into that dry dock around summer 2022. They're just about ready to go, but the shipyard has to be ready for them. Uh, so assuming everything lines up according to the current plan, summer 2022, they go into dry dock. Uh, they are planning to be there for up to a year to do all this work. At that point, they go to their new home location, uh, which has not been decided yet. They're still working on that. Uh, a number of cities in the greater Houston area, mostly within an hour of where the ship is right now, uh, have put in um, applications, bids, so, so to speak, packages, uh, saying, hey, if you bring the ship here, we'll give you this much money. We've got this berth for you. We've got room for you to build a landside museum. Um, and then after setting up that infrastructure, which will take probably no more than six months, the ship will reopen to the public. I would not be surprised if when she reopens, you don't have the full tour route that you had in the ship's heyday. Uh, they will probably start by restoring the main deck and superstructure areas and then maybe down to second deck. And uh, then over time, as you guys donate money to support them and they're able to generate revenue again, remember they're, they're completely closed for like the last two years and will be for at least another year. So they're not getting money in. Uh, as they get this money in, then they're able to go deeper into the ship and open engine rooms and gun turrets and, and these other cool features and add new tours and experiences. Uh, so it will be almost like a brand new museum ship starting from day one. And I'm so excited to come back in two years and see that. I'm even more excited to bring my kids to see this ship in 20 years when I get married and have kids. And they grow up and can appreciate this fine vessel. So be sure to donate to support this effort so this ship is here if and when I have kids. There's a link in the description below. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find out about our museum and our channel. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of businesses and individuals like yourselves. Thanks for watching.